Well, what can I say about the Health and Human Services decision that hadn't already been said? Um, well, a couple of things. Um, one, which actually has been said, and I think is one of the more troubling aspects, is the definition of religious activity as that which is oriented entirely towards uh, the promulgation of your faith, maybe, rather than service of the world. Um, I think that runs directly counter to the Catholic and even more generally the Christian understanding of what religion is, what the Christian faith is. Um, but I also think something that's not been commented on too much is the idea that somehow we are going to create a neutral public sphere that's scrubbed of all metaphysical presuppositions, all metaphysical commitments, and this really is simply a matter of managing the public sphere. Um, I think this is a case that shows that that's simply a fiction, um, that there are deep metaphysical disagreements among people, and at least on certain issues, we're not going to resolve them without resolving those issues. Um, so I think appeals to conscience or even religious liberty are a little misleading because really it comes down to disagreements over the nature of human beings, the nature of the human good. So I think that uh, this debate has shown us the pathos of liberal democracy, the desire to create a public policy that can bracket substantial questions about the nature of the common good um, in favor of a set of procedural arrangements. Some things can be handled purely on procedural arrangement. Picking up the garbage, we don't need to have a metaphysical agreement on. Um, but certain issues, we're going to have to have the substantive, the substantive debate. Um, and it seems to me that this Health and Human Services decision is really uh, confronting us with that, with that reality. Where do you think that debate's going to happen? In the hallways of Loyola University. <laughs> Does that mean that this is going to be an irreconcilable issue for the, the Christians? I suspect we'll probably patch something together. <laughs> Some agreement with the state, the way we always have, but it does make me wonder how long we can continue patching. Um, and at a certain point, the state might just have to say, I'm sorry, you cannot practice the Christian faith as you understand it. So, Stephen Shank at CUA, and there's a, like a public policy sort of think tank at CUA, and he's, he thinks that this issue is not at all over contraception, but entirely about religious liberty. What do you think the future for conversations within the Roman Catholic Church holds? With regard to contraception? Well, with regard to contraception and religious liberty. I mean, re the religious liberty debate amongst Catholics is not a new debate. Where do you think this debate is going in a kind of intra-Catholic way? Well, I, I, su I suppose that I hope that this debate within the Church will lead to a more chastened view of um, the ease with which Christian convictions can exist within liberal democracy, that liberal democracy doesn't solve the issue for Christians, that um, even in a liberal democracy there's going to be limits to toleration, um, and that simply appealing to religious liberty, which is really the language of liberal democracy, is only going to get Christians so far. It's only going to create a certain amount of space for Christians to do what they believe they need to do to practice the Christian faith. So I think one thing that might come out of this is a more chastened view of what liberal democracy can achieve. I hope it doesn't lead to a complete abandonment of liberal democracy because uh, 
certainly it can achieve some things, but I think it might give us a greater awareness of the limits of liberal democracy and the limits of notions like religious religious freedom. If if toleration is one of the, the sort of key words in your description here, does that mean that inherent to the relationship of the church to state there's always a kind of agonistic relationship even if it's even if it's one that's muted or subdued a good deal of the time? I, I, sus I wouldn't want to characterize it as inherently agonistic. Um, but I think in practice it's far more agonistic than, than either the state or the church really wants to um, own up to, at least at this moment. Though I think we're seeing quite a bit of agon <laughs> currently. I mean, it's it's funny how much of this comes back to Augustine's discussion of the city of God and the city of man, and really the difficulty in understanding, you know, what these city spaces look like and where they overlap and where they don't overlap, and where they're categorically similar and then just categorically different. Right. Well, I think... Augustine talks about the need for the heavenly city while on pilgrimage to make use of the peace, albeit the inadequate and maybe even false peace of the earthly city. And I think probably the church would, have, would be making great strides if it would come to see itself, even in liberal democracies, as simply making peace making use of the peace of the earthly city rather than seeing in notions like religious liberty some kind of anticipation of the heavenly city. So that would be a step forward if we could go back to the Augustinian view that even in a liberal, even in a liberal democracy the best we can really be doing is making use of the peace of the earthly city which at its best is an inadequate uh, image of the peace of the heavenly city. If that's not a chastened nostalgia, I don't know what is. <laughs>